I believed that there was a God, but I also believed that he wasn't good. I felt like how could an all-powerful, all-good being let so many bad things happen in my life. Lucas Allison was molested by a neighbor when he was a young boy. The resulting pain and confusion set the trajectory for his life. I don't think I really had any idea that it was wrong or that anything was off about it until I started getting older and then we started learning about those sorts of things in school. I was you know, angry about a lot of things. Um, I was starting to become you know, depressed and sort of suicidal. One of the first experiences I had with like an attempted suicide was when I was um, probably 12 or 13 years old. His father had suffered a traumatic brain injury from a fall, which made it difficult to have a relationship with him. My dad was never really um, emotionally available. After my, he and my mom divorced, my dad, um, he changed a lot. Lucas turned to drugs and alcohol at an early age, and sought friends in the world of heavy metal and goth music. I really resonated with a lot of the, you know, the, the darker themes and music that was really about um, pain and abandonment and things like that. So I didn't really have a lot of friends elsewhere, um, but we were all kind of like the outcasts together. Feeling disconnected from his family and unsure of a direction for his life, Lucas enlisted in the army and was stationed in Iraq. The first time that I had been in an IED attack. I just remember thinking to myself, like, if there is a God and he's doing this to me, then he's a jerk and I don't want any part of him. It's because I, I still believe in God, I just hated him. Lucas loved to debate Christians and mock their beliefs. I would just sit there and poke holes in, you know, everything that I heard or anything that people were talking about. I felt really bad about myself and I wanted to kind of tear them down so that they they felt as bad as I did. After his discharge, Lucas drifted for a while and had a brief failed marriage. Then he met Sierra, who was raised a Christian, but had been wounded and judged by the church and had walked away. When I met Lucas, I didn't want anything to do with God or any of the people who claimed to love God. I wanted to be as far away from God and his so-called people in my mind at that point um, as I possibly could. And Lucas seemed to tick all the boxes. Sierra's mother had encouraged her to write a letter to her former pastor who asked to meet with her. He wanted to meet with me. He wanted to hear my story. He wanted to um, encourage me and meet me where I was. Just the kindness of him um, being willing to meet me there was what turn, turned everything for me. It changed my heart. To Lucas' displeasure, Sierra began attending church again. Lucas decided to attend with her so he could monitor her. I was worried that uh, she was being brainwashed because I couldn't fathom in my head, like, how could she just, like, let them apologize to her and then all of a sudden she's a Christian again. And I'd be taking notes, just listening to everything that the pastor was saying and just trying to find inconsistencies and find reasons why uh, it wasn't good information and I couldn't. Um, attending church you know, regularly and listening to the message and um, just reading a lot, um, you know, it, he really started to kind of soften my heart. A pastor at the church encouraged him to attend a three-day silent retreat and Lucas reluctantly agreed. I did a lot of journaling while I was at the retreat. I would read for a little bit and then maybe I would find a passage and I would just kind of look at it. I would put down like all my thoughts as if I were having like a conversation with Jesus. And the more that I did that and the more that I journaled um, during that time, the more I just kind of had this overwhelming feeling of acceptance. Lucas came back from the retreat a different person. I had definitely said, okay, I'm ready to follow Jesus and I'm, I'm ready to you know, give my life to, to serving. I was given a very performance-based picture of God when I you know, realized that Jesus isn't like that. He doesn't ask us to perform for him. He just willingly gives us salvation and love and all we have to do is accept it. I started to be able to forgive my dad 
I started to realize that really it wasn't even my dad's fault. So I was able to start looking deeper into my past and really addressing some of the things that, that were kind of unresolved. Lucas went on to get a teaching degree. Today, the Allisons have a family and are serving God faithfully at their church in Kentucky. When I think about how God used not only my hurt, when I see how God used that to reach my husband, the redemption of that, him healing, not just him, but he healed me. And it is just, it's amazing. I'm blessed to have such a huge ministry field. I can't actually share the gospel with my students, but that doesn't mean that I can't minister to them. That doesn't mean that I can't love them by example. It doesn't mean that I can't live my life in a Christ-centered way. Faith is difficult for a lot of people, but when you actually experience Jesus, then it just, it makes faith impossibly easy.